opted into it, um, but they are reporting it as spam. And, and surprisingly enough, that feedback is actually given to the Internet service providers or the ISPs or webmail providers, and that is calculated against you in the form of complaint rates. And I'll be going over a lot more detail about complaint rates and the metrics and, and how ISPs measure that in a bit. But to me, that's always surprising that subscribers um, that opt into your program are, are using that to, to get rid of your email. So I'm going to show some tactics of how to overcome that. Um, so even if they do click on uh, spam, um, you can maybe lead them into to other directions to not do that. So uh, based on research that we've done at Return Path, when we look at all of our senders, and we have thousands of senders using our tools, we can actually gauge where your emails are being delivered, whether it's the inbox, the spam folder, or whether they're being um, blocked or dropped on the floor by the Internet service providers. And year after year, we find kind of the same thing, is that uh, one out of five emails um, and these are legitimate opt-in emails, not spam, never reach the inbox. And that's actually a pretty surprising number. And that number hasn't changed since I've um, really been at Return Path for you know, almost eight years now. And, and the reason for that is you know, it's all due to uh, sending reputation, which I, which I mentioned I'm going to be talking about. So what does that, how does that impact your uh, return on investment? So you can see here as an example of the kind of the email marketing continuum. So you you know you send it, your bounces, those illegitimate addresses um, uh, uh, get taken out, and then your emails are typically delivered to the inbox. However, if they're not, let's take that 20% average and use that with maybe 80,000 uh, subscribers reached uh, with $12.50 um, per revenue per email sent means that you have about an email in sales per year from your email program, which is great. Um, however, you can see even if you increase your deliverability just by 20%, meaning that you've now reached 96,000 subscribers, and let's say that your revenue still remains the same at $12.50, your revenue or your sales per year is now $1.2 million. So you've had a $200,000 increase in ROI just by improving your deliverability. So getting your emails out of the spam folder and into the inbox so your subscribers can actually see it, click through on it, and convert and make you money. So a lot of the questions that I get are, you know, how did we actually even come to this um, you know, situation? So why are ISPs, why are these Internet service providers even blocking my email? Shouldn't they be delivering it to my subscribers since they opted in? Um, aren't they, um, shouldn't they be forced to do that because of laws, like if you're familiar with the can spam law? And the answer is no. So there's been plenty of um, legal suits that are involving the Internet service providers where the, the courts have stated that they control their domain. And I always um, liken it to something that my parents always said. It's my house and it's my rules. And it's the same thing with Internet service providers. Um, they're obviously in the job of protecting